This time we're going to talk about energy coupling. Last time we talked about the free energy in which we you know to as delta G and we knew that we can use this value in order to determine whether the reaction is exergonic or endergonic reaction. We said that exergonic reactions will give heat and so the delta G will be negative and that endergonic reactions will take in energy and so the delta G will be positive and we also said that this is because exergonic reactions are usually catabolic reactions and catabolic reactions break um, chemical compounds in order to produce two or more separate compounds and in this process we will have the products plus energy release because it breaks down the compound while endergonic reactions are usually anabolic reactions and matter of fact they're completely opposite to catabolic reactions so they build up materials and in order to perform that they need energy so here we have energy as an input so, based on that knowledge, we can understand what energy coupling means. Because energy coupling depends on the nature of chemical compounds. Because through the process or the progress of a chemical uh, chain of compounds, we can sum up the free energies of two related chemical reactions and get the total free energy and so energy coupling actually can be of two types the first one is direct and the other one is indirect energy coupling so let's see the first one the first one will go on like this let's say for the inputs we have compounds A plus B and for the output we have C plus D and here in the middle we have an intermediary compound and the chemical structure of this intermediary compound should be related to any of these compounds that we have here so part of it would be similar to A or B or C or D. So it's an intermediate uh, chemical compound. And throughout this intermediate compound, these two reactions are chemically related. And thus, we can sum the delta G. An example for such reactions would be like the transformation of glucose 1-phosphate into glucose 6-phosphate. So glucose is a 6-carbon chain and here in this structure we have a phosphate group bound to the first carbon and then it becomes uh, bound to the 6th carbon and then we have this intermediate compound with glucose 6 phosphate changing into fructose 6 phosphate so glucose changed into fructose now the delta G for that reaction is minus 1.74 kilocalories per mole and the delta G for the other reaction is positive 
or plus 0 0.4 kilocalories per mole. And the energy coupling depends on the additive nature of the free energies. So we add them together to get the final delta D of the whole reaction of glucose 1-phosphate changing into fructose 6-phosphate and we will get minus 1.34 kilocalories per mole. And this is an example for a direct coupling. Now for the indirect coupling, we have a molecule that acts as an energy transporter between two different reactions and it doesn't have to be an intermediate compound through the chain itself. That's why it's called indirect while the other one was called direct because the intermediate molecule that affects the connection of the two reactions in the first case is actually involved in the reaction itself. But in the indirect reaction we would have a reaction let's say these are the um, inputs and these are the products and we have a totally different reaction another one where we have the inputs and the products and here we would have an energy molecule that would transform the energy from one reaction to the other one. The energy molecules involved in such reactions are called macroergic compounds. Macroergic compounds. And the most important example for such compounds is adenosine triphosphate. ATP, which is the international energy currency or the universal energy currency for uh, living organisms. So ATP is a very very important molecule in that aspect. So now we know what energy coupling means. Next time we're gonna talk about adenosine triphosphate in order to understand it more and know how it produces its um, energy in order to provide the, um, um, the different chemical reactions of different um, metabolic purposes and so on. So until the next time, uh, thank you for watching and see you.